Thanks for joining me today on the Algoma University Professor Spotlight. My name is Taylor Nicey, and I'm an enrollment specialist at the Brampton campus. So I want to pass it over to you if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and giving us a little insight into who you are and what led you to the position that you're in today. Sure. Bonjour, uh, Anine. Je commence en de go. Michigan Dodem, je pense bien donc pas. Michna bien ni en dao. Oj bi gen ni en dao. Nui shagnaji. So my uh, the name the spirit gave me is Bear Walker. Uh, my English name is uh, Dr. Andrew Judge. I am a professor of Anishinaabe studies at Algoma University, located in Bawating or, or the Sault Ste. Marie campus. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's lovely to have you here today, and I'm excited to learn more about the Anishinaabe studies program at Algoma. So diving into the program a bit, I'm wondering if you have a favorite class that you instruct. That's a good question. Uh, it's hard to see which is my favorite. I teach a course, like a special topics course in uh, with a short title of Anishinaabe land uh, with a longer title of uh, Anishinaabe land sustainability practices. So that really is my area of specialization. And uh, I, it, the course covers um, some of the land-based practices Practices that the ancestors of this region, my ancestors, engaged in, um, not only prior to colonization, so there's like a historical element, uh, but also uh, some of the practices, the land-based and water-based practices that we're engaged in now. So I, I, I do love to talk about those topics. It's, it's quite incredible once you dive into um, how the culture flowed and continues to flow to this day and how we continue to upkeep some of our responsibilities in taking care of the land. Yeah, that, that is a super interesting and, and a really important topic as well. I'm wondering as well, um, what kind of careers would come from a degree like this? Where do students usually go after they graduate from this program? Good question. So, uh, where we're located in Sault Ste. Marie, there are two uh, local First Nations. Uh, I know that the uh, Batuana First Nation has a huge staff, you know, hundreds of people, and they are always um, struggling to fill their positions in health, in uh, forestry, in uh, the various fields that like they do all kinds of activities within their community um, and outside because of course this is their traditional territory so um, from Bawating all the way up to Pakasa um, they have different operations happening different businesses and of course within their own um, within Rankin which is closest to uh, Sault Ste. Marie, they have a number of like offices and, and things to do there. So <clears throat> there's those opportunities. There's also, of course, um, Garden River First Nation. Okay. And similarly, they have a number of um, roles and responsibilities that they need within their organization. And uh, Anishinaabe Studies gives students um, a sense of what goes on in the First Nation. Um, like I myself have several students hired right now currently. So those students are working with me directly on the land or they're we're helping me to develop um, content for our YouTube channel, as well as um, activities to engage the community. So I have a pretty large community who's engaged in like monthly moon cycle teachings that are going to be ongoing. Um, we always need help with those activities. Of course, there's um, Algoma University. They're always looking for uh, students uh, who have um, successfully completed their Anishinaabe Studies degree. Mm -hmm. And then I also have students going on to do their master's. And unfortunately, we don't have a master's yet here at the school. Uh, but there are um, students who complete their three-year degree 
um, in Anishinaabe studies and even Ojibwe Moen. So yeah. usually our students will do both and then they'll go on to other schools to um, do a master's or do a um, on honors uh, specialization. And really the sky's the limit with Anishinaabe studies. Like this is what I studied and now I'm a professor, right? Yeah. So um, of course I went and did my master's and eventually a PhD and uh, that's a lot of work, um, but the undergrad programs really trying to focus students uh, we want to fulfill Shinglock's vision. Mm -hmm. um, of course, um, my work is uh, primarily through Shinglock Ginomagegamik, which is like the constituent, a constituent to Algoma. And we have a brand new building here in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, we're almost ready. Of course, COVID restricted uh, our ability to open, but we're almost ready to open our center to students. It's right on the water. It's an extraordinary place. Like if I had a choice where I would, could have studied, um, this oh, yeah. would have been uh, a place for sure. So um, for me, it's not so much. It's like I did my undergrad in philosophy and people okay. always said, oh, what are you going to do with philosophy? There's no careers, there's no jobs in that. And my, my professor, he would always say, it's not what uh, philosophy um, can do for you with you or for you, it's what you can do with philosophy. And so like what I did with Anishinaabe studies is I continued to pursue my culture. I continued to pursue, um, you know, the academic side as well. Mm -hmm. And that led me to become a professor of Anishinaabe studies. So um, there's a lot of opportunities and it's really up to the student in, in my program in this program we really try to offer students the opportunity to uh, seek what it is that resonates most with them and, and giving them um, chances to use their culture while earning uh, academic uh, degree so there's that that combination and it's very unique to this country it's very unique to um, you know, the world and, and of course, this, my study is in education. So uh, there, there are some examples in Australia, there's some examples in Hawaii where this is, uh, this is happening, but to have the ability to learn your language, to learn your culture while also earning a degree, uh, this, is, this is the future for, I think, Anishinaabe students and we want to uh, give them as many opportunities to experience what that's like as possible. I, you, would you say that majority of the students in this program are Anishinaabe students or there's a range of students that choose to study Anishinaabe studies? I was wondering if you could talk towards our special mission a little <clears throat> bit about cultivating cross-cultural learning. Sure. So um we get a mix like i get a mix of students uh, in the first year courses um, they are really popular so mm. students from pretty much every field of study at the university will take these courses they're uh really high enrollment like i have yeah. one course right now with over 120 students um which might be a little too much but you know it's online so uh can't complain too it's much. important stuff but yeah so those courses really offer a foundation and an anishinaabe cosmology our way of life our way of seeing the world and they're very popular so we get a range of students from all walks of life in the actual program that we that we have anishinaabe studies um, there is I would say the majority are Anishinaabe, but of course it's non-discriminatory. We want students from all walks of life, and and I did have students from various cultures who are, are and uh, you know in the process of completing that that degree. Um, in terms of the special mission, um, you know we uh, I teach Anishinaabe culture, so this is just one Indigenous culture. And I can't speak to other Indigenous cultures. I, I'm lucky to have spent time with Haudenosaunee people, with Lenape elders, with Mayan elders, uh, with Huichol elders, with um, Yanakona Mitmat elders down in Colombia. Um, 
So I've had various opportunities to learn from other Indigenous groups with their own language, their own identity. And for us, we teach Anishinaabe studies. So um, that is our culture. So in terms of other people coming in, we get cultures from around the world. And what I always tell my students from other places who usually speak um, English as a second or third language is that once they learn, now they can go and translate to their families or their communities, the circles that they're a part of. And I think that that is so important when it comes to Indigenous education. It's very specifically identifying which Indigenous knowledge, which culture, because sometimes there's this um, pan-Indigenization that happens. People think, even a lot of my students will come into the course thinking that all Indigenous people in Canada are the same. And I say, whoa, whoa wait a second, you know, there, there's 630 reserves there are 12 language families. The Algic language family of which Anishinaabe is a part of has some say a hundred dialects. In my research, I found over 30 dialects. So uh, there's, there's quite a complexity to indigenous people in this country. Mm -hmm. And at Shingwak uh, Gigamagegamik, we focus on Anishinaabe people and even more specifically the people of um, Bawating or Sault Ste. Marie, Bawating being the place of the rapids. Awesome. That's, that's great to hear and, and, and really interesting information for me to hear. Um, moving on to talk a little bit about your time as an instructor at Algoma. I'm wondering if you have any specific reasons why you love instructing at Algoma um, and maybe also S, like SKG and that um, relationship between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, my teaching primarily happens through Shingwak and um, and um, I think that it's really important that partnership between Algoma and Shingwak and supporting Shingwak and being a place where um, the, what I just described can happen, uh, you know, safely and without interference, uh, because you know when it comes down to it, what we're trying to do is we're trying to save our culture, our identity, our nation. And I think that sometimes that doesn't get translated in a colonial environment um, because of um, the agenda of, of certain places. So um, I think that Algoma does have a mission to support Anishinaabe people to support Shingwak's vision to provide a, both a balance of Anishinaabe culture as well as academics. And I feel like I'm an example of how that is successful, right? Like, I mean, yeah. I pursued my culture, I pursued academics, and I, I brought them together. And now I get to teach my culture at an institution that focuses on Anishinaabe studies, like in the homeland of my ancestors, right? Yeah, what an amazing uh, feel, combination. Yeah, exactly. So there's some beautiful places around here. Like my family, um, my on my dad's side, just was born down the road in Thessalon. I know we have multiple campuses. And um, coming back to your earlier question, you know, in every campus and every community, there is Indigenous population. Mm -hmm. And it's not that Anishinaabe studies only prepares you for Indigenous population. No matter what field anybody works in, they will encounter Indigenous people. Yeah. And um, they will encounter Indigenous people disproportionately in certain fields, like healthcare, like um, social services, um, as a result of some of the impacts of colonization. But with that sort of aside, if we just think about the land, this is truly one of the most beautiful places. It's the confluences of um, uh, four, three, three of the Great Lakes or four of the Great Lakes. Like it's just an incredible place where, you know, water is abundant. You know, if you go just north of Sault Ste. Marie, uh, there's all kinds of conservation areas. Um, Gargantua, which I've been to and did ceremony at, um, Agawa Provincial Park, which I've gone to and done ceremony at, um, just over here in Hiawatha, like it's a, you know, 
10 minute drive from the university and there's trails, mountain biking, cross country skiing, uh, what's it called? Um, snowshoeing. Snowshoeing, thank you. There's, yeah. you know, there's skating and uh, there's all kinds of opportunities to be outside and mm -hmm. to literally not hear a car uh, and and be surrounded by um, trees and uh, I like to get out and do that there's fishing you know there's a lot yeah. there, I've been out net fishing line fishing <laughs> catching you know pike and uh, speckled trout white fish um, suckers like it's truly a place where whatever your uh, pursuit is and if it's something related to land then uh, you can come here and experience that it really is such a beautiful location i you yeah. listed a long <laughs> list of activities that anybody who remotely likes the outdoors and partaking those kind of things would just their eyes would light up like to be able mm -hmm. to do that so um, not only like when you're not in class or on campus, but then sometimes incorporated into certain courses is very yeah. helpful. So, Absolutely. Um, the way I like to end off all my interviews is to ask the professors <clears throat> how they bring the thunder, AKA what makes their program at Algoma so special. You did list some really great items already. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Yeah, so for me, um, my area of specialization is like land-based, culture-based education. And uh, for me, it's, it's my practice. So just yesterday, we were preparing um, a, a space to grow corn. Um, a couple of days ago, we're doing ceremony. Uh, we did the sugar bush. We have had, uh, we've gone out to the land to do net fishing to catch, you know, uh, 30 whitefish overnight and, and, and 150 foot net set under the ice. Um, we will be uh, working with uh, community members to make ash baskets so we can use them to harvest birch bark. We'll be working with birch bark. Um, I only started in August but those are just some of the things that we've already created opportunities for we are of course restricted by covid but you know we produced 65 liters of maple syrup and we had all kinds of volunteers and as we move forward more and more that will become incorporated into our program for credit uh, that students can engage in these actual activities language uh, uh, language immersion camps um land-based culture camps you know things that actually will get credit for university diploma and help people to realize their identity um, not just as anishinaabe people but as human beings that's how i bring the thunder awesome i love that that is a, a thunder <laughs> <laughs> thank you Thank you so much for joining me today. This was really interesting. And um, I really enjoyed hearing about the Anishinaabe Studies Program at Algoma and getting to know you a little bit as well. So thank you for joining me today on the professor's- No problem. Thanks for having me, Taylor. Wonderful, have a great rest of your day. Okay, you too, thanks. Mm -hmm.